All right, party people, we got everything up and running, the brains and the brawn to the system. Uh, first things first, let me go ahead and show you this. Uh, here, let me turn on the light. Uh, it's going to be a bit bright, but you'll be able to see things a bit better. All right, so this is the new output board I put in, and you can kind of tell through this mess of wires that I put in an extra input and output here in case I need to throw another card in here to fill up these other two axes, axis I, axis, I don't know. Anyway, and so all of these connections are just new trick uh, XLR locking connections for power. And then also for the encoders, I also have these five pin DIN like MIDI cables. They work pretty well, but I'm sure there's better, more secure ways of doing this. Somebody will have to let me know. That doesn't cost an arm and a leg on our AC input. And then these RCA connections, those are all for, they're going to be for, um, limit switches and home switches and then also the two relays and VFD outputs and what have you. We got fans on all sides, the ones on top are for intake, the ones are at the bottom are exhaust. Let's go ahead and open this up and show you what's on the inside. This was just a regular junction box but I cut it up and painted it safety blue because I plan on hopefully making the whole machine this color. So we got the big honking killing or uh, automation technologies power supply. Uh, each one of these turns out to be its own separate output power supply that provides 70 volts. So I got two going to each, uh, two drivers going into each one of these individual power supplies. We got the little termination uh, strip up here. Uh, this is where all my grounding is going to, and like kind of a star configuration. It all comes here and then goes back out to the uh, ground earth here try to avoid any kind of humming or uh, ground loop. We have these two uh, uh, little DC power supplies, one's 12 volt. Uh, this is an upgrade to the one I initially bought because it blew almost immediately, so I got a bit beefier. I think this is a 12 volt 1.5 amp, and then I also have a 5 volt 3.0 amp, and I'm using this to power all the 5 volt circuitry in the board. Uh, both of these are just connected. I hacked off one of those three uh, prong extension cords, if you can make it out. See if we, yeah, you can kind of see it in there. So, uh, nothing fancy about that. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this board. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do first things first, which is the power input. Um, you can make it out there. You can see it, those two. That's the main 5-volt power coming from that 5-volt power supply. Um, that just powers most electronics. There's another 5 volt input we'll get to in a second that powers the actual power going to everything else that it's controlling. Um, and then we have the uh, output uh, output of the board or pass through in case you need to plug this into something else. I don't ever really need that, but I went and wired it with a ribbon cable. Oh, speaking of, let me go ahead and go through that real quick. This was kind of a pain in the butt to learn until I saw a video on YouTube, and I'll just show the technique here. But the best way I found to do this is take your ribbon cable things and clamp them in lightly until they're lined up find yourself a vise, like I have this little drill vise, and put it in there and then slowly tighten it until it clicks into place so it gets nice even pressure otherwise all the wires won't make connection okay we went over the output so let's go here, here this first one you're going to see is a 5 volt and then the enable switch uh, typically this is wired to a switch in case you wanted to, like a safety in case you wanted to turn the system off and on to keep from enabled or disabled, I believe that's the purpose. Uh, right now I just have it jumped because I don't have a switch. Um, you can also, I think you can daisy chain this into your e-stop if you wanted to. There's a one pin and a ground pin, which I have no use for, I don't know how to use them. And then we have the X, Y, Z, and A channels, and I believe that those should be what, uh, yeah. So it goes step, common, direction, step common direction step common direction step common direction and what that means is that the black wires are going to the steps inputs on the drivers the commons are the power that's going to there and then the red is the direction which is saying which direction to go when you do step um, there's also an extra looks like there's a let's see if I can get this to focus a uh, 14 ground uh, 16 it looks like, but I think they could like, use that for like spindle control, maybe another axis. No idea. 
There is a 17 here, but I think that's typically reserved for safety charge pumps, like signals coming from the computer. If you wanted to send that out to anything else, to say, hey, I'm still connected, don't, you know, rip my arm off. Uh, here's the input, another ribbon cable. That was fun. Um, I had it backwards a number of times until I finally figured it out. Uh, and then also, okay, here's the 12 volt input. Um, this is if you want to control something like a speed controller or VFDs, you know, variable speed, and it's controlled once you put the 12 in, you can adjust this potentiometer that then controls the system from 0 to 10 volt. Um, so it's a nice little speed controller. Here's the other 5 volt input. This is used to actually power the, um, the output, I believe. I'm not sure. All I know is it does not work if you don't have 5 places plugged in with 5 volt. It has some extra jacks too in case you want to daisy chain this on to something else that requires 5 volt. Then the last ones are over here are the relay inputs and out, uh, inputs and outputs and those are for uh, if you want to you know control something like uh, like a vacuum system or coolant uh, or so you can either wire them normally closed or normally open. Right now I have them wired uh, normally open I believe. Here are the inputs. Let's, I'm trying to go through quick now because it looks like my battery is about to die. So I'm going to use this one for input. It uh, goes 15, uh, 15 ground, 13 ground, 12 ground, no, don't, uh, however the pairs are. But basically the, this one's going to be used for limits. The other three are going to be used for homing. And the last one's empty because that's typically used for e-stop. And I don't have an e-stop switch set up yet. So I think it covered everything in the board, and these are the geckos. They require just power from the power supply, and then power going to the uh, the controllers, and then uh, I have the, a jumper set up for the encoder's air going to its its positive five volt because I don't have any air reset switches. Then you just power up the ground and the um, the, the plus volt, and then the A channel and B channel to the encoders. So you have four wires going out. All right, let's go ahead and power it on and show you what I got before my phone dies. Okay, so the fans are on, lights are on, you got your channels on, you got the one 5 volt and the other 5 volt light on. Uh, all the fans are going on along nicely. And you'll hear this distinct uh, noise from the motors. And that'll be the X, this will be the Y, and that'll be the Z. And let's run them all at the same time. Pretty. I'm actually surprised at the resolution. I'm just tapping the keys, look how slow I can get those to go. So I don't know if gearing is going to be that big of an issue as I thought. Uh, you guys let me know. Yeah, so if anybody has any opinion, uh, sorry, opinions or uh, recommendations how I could do anything better, please let me know. Uh, I'm a rank amateur, and if you decide to do something like this, <laughs> do it at your own risk, because I sure as hell did. All right, thanks a lot.